Okay, so the supplies that you're gonna need to make this paint dipped um, wooden spoon is obviously a wooden spoon. I grabbed this little one at the Dollar Tree. You could also, if you wanted to do like a set of these, um, maybe Target or Amazon would have those. So just a simple wooden spoon. The thing I like about this one is it's got a, a bigger surface and it's not round, it's flat. And then your acrylic paints. I chose this jadeite one just because I have a few pieces of jadeite in my kitchen and I thought it would match nicely. So this is what color I'm going to do for the paint dip. And then for the wording, I'm just using plain black acrylic paint. Um, you do also need some painter's tape to tape off your wooden spoon for the paint dip. We're not actually dipping it. We're gonna give it the look of that by using the painter's tape. And then uh, some kind of a palette. I just keep a wooden plate or a paper plate. You can see this has been used numerous times, but the paint dries and I just add more paint on top of it. And it's just a really inexpensive way to um, do that. I forgot to grab my paint brushes, so I'm just gonna pause this for a sec and go get those and show you what I use for the lettering. So to do the lettering, you need a really fine paintbrush with a fine head and see how this one is pointed at the end that will really just help make letters that are neat if you have a brush that's a little bit frayed on the ends like this one it's gonna be a lot harder to get a nice clean look so I don't know where I bought this I think it was Michaels but you know Dollar Tree has paint brushes just look for one with that really fine pointy tip on it and you should be good all right, let's get started. All right, so the first step is to grab your painter's tape and we're gonna tape off our wooden spoon. Just rip a piece off. Sorry, my son is mowing in the backyard. Hopefully you can hear me. Now, you need to decide how far you want your paint to go down. I don't want mine to go all the way because obviously this is gonna be something I will be using in the kitchen and you don't want your paint to come in contact with your food. So I'm thinking I'm gonna go, I don't even know how far this is, but it's a little bit more than halfway down. You do what works for you. And just make sure that your lines on the front and the back match up. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this excess off. And then to keep, oh, you know what? Do you see that? It's not completely lined up there, so I'm just gonna fiddle with this a little bit. The thing is, is that this wooden spoon tapers as it goes down to the spoon part. So I just need to be a little more careful about how I line it up. All right. And then you just want to give your edges of the tape a little burnish. So I just use my fingernail and what that does is it just makes sure that it's sticking really well and there's less chance of the paint seeping under the tape and leaving a messy edge for you. Be really careful to do it on the edges. All right, so that is done. Um, boy, I'm not ready today. Forgot to get a brush for brushing this part of it. We're gonna brush the my jadeite green on this end of the wooden spoon because we want to leave the cooking end natural. So whatever paint you choose to use, just give it a good shake and put a little bit on your palette. And then I'm going to brush away from the tape. So I'm going to start at the tape edge and just go away from the tape. That again will just help with those crisp edges that we want. 
Now, if your wooden spoon is a little bit rough like mine is, you may just have to get in the grooves there with your paintbrush. And I'm choosing to take mine all the way down to the end. If you wanted to, you could also tape off this end and leave it natural. So let's do the side next. And we're just gonna work our way around the wooden spoon. And I'm guessing I'm gonna do another coat. The acrylic paint dries quite quickly, but I'm also going to use a heating tool to speed it up for the purposes of this video. If you want to, you could use a hairbrush. I'm sorry, a blow dryer. <laughs> My mind is just all over the place today. All right, and you notice that I'm just going in one direction And then let's not forget this little end here. All right, that was coat one. Now I've got this heating tool that is a craft tool for when you're doing cards and embossing, but it's actually really nice because it's extra hot and it'll help dry this. So I'm just gonna dry it off real quick, dry the paint. See, that didn't take very long. It's still slightly wet, but I'll bet that that dries in the next couple seconds. You can see anywhere that it's kind of glossy. That's where it's wet a little bit right here. Once it dries, it kind of turns a matte color. All right, so let's get a little more paint. That should probably do it. And let's paint the second coat. I'm going to go ahead and finish this and then I'll jump back in once this is dry. Okay, so my paint is completely dry and I'm just going to peel the paint off. And look at that nice crisp line all the way around. Doesn't that look cute? All right, so now the second step of this is to put a cute little saying on it. Um, your mom probably has a saying like, I don't know, eat your grub or, you know, just a cute saying. Think of something that your mom says, or if you can't think of anything, you could just do paint mom's kitchen on here. Moms love personalized gifts, and I promise you it doesn't have to be perfect for your mom to love it. So I decided, um, my dad used to say, my mom and dad have both passed on, but my dad used to say, hey, good looking, what you got cooking? He used to sing that to my mom in the kitchen. So that is what I'm gonna attempt to paint on here, freehand. I'm gonna do, hey, good looking on one side and what you got cooking, if I can fit it on the other side. This may end up being a flop, we'll see. But rather than, when you're freehand painting, and trust me, I don't do this very often, my method of choice would be to cut something out of my out of vinyl with my silhouette machine but i wanted to make this project as easy as possible for anybody to do with just a few basic supplies so we're going to attempt this and see how it goes rather than doing um, rounded letters i'm going to use the inspiration from my ray dunn mug collection and you can see that these are just very simple letters they're all straight so there's no um you know, curly cues or corners. But my tip for you would be to grab a pencil and very, very lightly pencil what you want to say. And I found that um, if you need to, you can use an art eraser and erase the pencil. Say you mess up and you need to start over. So I am going to 
get started. So I'm gonna say, hey, good looking on one side, and I'm going to try to make my letters as tall as possible. One thing I like to do is I'll just, as you saw, I just kind of faux wrote just to see if it would fit. And I'm getting pretty close to that um, little hole. I wish I had the whole space, but I don't. So I may need to just make my letters slightly smaller. And remember, keep your pencil marks light so that you're able to brush over it. You see my hay there? All right. But I'm sure you can think of something clever to put on yours that your mom would appreciate, knowing that it's a family saying or it's something that your mom says. Okay, this did work. I had to leave the G off of looking, but actually the way it's pronounced is, hey, good looking anyway, so I'm not gonna worry about that. All right, so the next step is just to get a little bit of your black paint or whatever color you're choosing to use. You're gonna use very little paint. And I do have a damp paper towel I ran and grabbed because just in case the paint gets a little too thick on the end of my brush, I need to be able to dab it off. So I'm just dipping just the tip in the black paint. And I'm gonna start. Just take this part slow and slow and steady. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. Your mom will love it just because you thought of her and wanted to make something special for her. That's just how moms are. All right, let me show you how that turned out. So I did the H and it's a little crooked, but you know what? I think it's gonna be just fine. So pretty much for every line I'm doing, I'm re-dipping my brush. Well, I guess that's not true. You just play it by ear and see how often you think you need to re-dip. You don't want a big glob of paint on the end of your bristles. If you wind up with a glob of paint, see how I'm just wiping it off on the damp paper towel to clean it and then re-dip it. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this and I'll pop back in and show you when it's all done. Well, I kinda thought this might happen. We've got a craft fail on our hands. I am just not happy with how my letters are looking. It's just so hard to get nice, neat lines. So rather than throw in the towel, I'm going to rethink this project. What I did, I let everything dry and then I took a fine sanding sponge and sanded so that each side was smooth. And I've re-taped the edge. <laughs> We're gonna start over. So I think instead of doing a lot of letters like I was trying to do, that was just too many words. I think I'm gonna stick with mom, but I thought it also might be cute and it'd be very easy to get a um, grain sack type look. So my plan is to repaint it green to cover up these letter fails and let that dry. And then I'm gonna add some more tape in the middle and give a little bit of a, a grain sack, a faux grain sack effect. And then I may do the word mom, we'll see. Kind of lost my confidence in the whole hand painting arena. I'm just not that steady with my hands. It's really a lot harder than you think it's going to be. And normally by this point, I've actually practiced on uh, a piece. Unfortunately, this was the last wooden spoon at my Dollar Tree so I had to just grab it and I didn't have one to practice on, but it's gonna be okay. 
If you are very steady with your hands, go ahead and do a cute saying on the spoon. I think it's a great idea. That's why I wanted to do it. But if you're like me and you're struggling to get it to look right, and I wasn't looking for perfection. I just, I didn't want it to look, I don't know. I don't want to say kindergarten because it was beyond that, but you know what I'm saying. Just not something I would be proud to give to someone as a gift. All right, so you can see rather than drawing one side at a time, I'm just kind of going back over it with the second coat of paint. And I think to cover up some of these letters that kind of want to peek through, I may go ahead and do my stripes down here and then another set up here but let's go ahead and let this dry. I'm gonna go ahead and use my um, heat gun again. I'm not gonna make you sit through the sound of that, so I'm just gonna turn off my camera and I'll see you back here when it's all dry. <clears throat> okay, you guys, true confessions. While I was waiting for my paint to dry on my attempt to correct my fail, I sort of was being a little hard on myself thinking, why should I even post this? This is just bad. And then I thought, you know what? Well, first I had a little bit of chocolate <laughs> and then I thought, why not? I mean, you guys need to know that even longtime crafters, we make mistakes and we have craft fails and we have things that don't go to plan and don't turn out how we wanted them to. So I'm sticking with it and we're going to figure this out and make something cute anyway. All right, get the last of my chocolate out of my teeth and I'm going to flip the phone over and we're going to keep going with this Mother's Day wooden spoon gift. All right, I'm back to just my painted surface with no words. After it dried, I did lightly sand it again just to smooth it out. And we're going to do some grain sack stripes. Now, if you've ever seen grain sacks, there's parallel stripes in one color on either side of a solid color. I hope that made sense. So we are going to try to recreate that. And I think the best way to get it even is I'm going to tape my tape one tape length from the edge. All right, does that make sense? So we're just gonna get this on here. You do wanna make sure your paint is very dry before you put tape over top of it. All right, so I'm just gonna burnish the edges a little bit. Okay, now I'm gonna get a second piece of tape. So I'm taping off where I want my, I'm going to do a coat of white, all right? All right, so what's that? About a quarter inch. Carry it around the back. And just burnish those edges a little bit. Okay, so that is gonna be white. Now hold on. Okay, let's do one more because I want double stripes. I actually wish this tape was thinner so that this wasn't quite so wide. And I could cut my tape down the middle, but the way today's going, I think we'll just stick with it as is. So I'm going to match up the size, just eyeballing it. And that's maybe slightly bigger. I guess I'm just having one of those days, you guys. Last night I got stung by something out in my yard. And I don't know if you've noticed, but this wrist is red and kind of swollen. So I'm on Benadryl today and I, I guess I can just blame all my faux pas on Benadryl, right? <laughs> all right. 
So we are going to just paint these two green stripes with a coordinating color and I think I'm going to just do white. This should be pretty easy. I don't think I can mess this up. Just a little bit of white paint. I went ahead and grabbed a clean paintbrush. It doesn't really matter what you use. Actually, I think I'm gonna use this one though. I like a bristle that's a little bit stiffer rather than a super fluffy one. All right, so I'm just going to paint these stripes. Now, because I'm painting a lighter coat over the green, I'm definitely gonna need a couple coats of paint, but that's, that's fine. It does dry very quickly. If you put your paint on too heavily, like I just did there, then you have to wipe off all the excess and it sort of creates little lines. So I think it's better to do a couple of light coats. And as usual, I put way too much paint over there on my palette, but usually what I do when I finish a product project is I just use my paintbrush and scoop the paint back into the jar, the paint that I didn't use. You know, I was thinking if you really are serious about adding words to this, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> a simple solution would be to buy a packet of stickers and just use stickers. Um, I would keep it far away from the end that's going to be used for cooking. I mean, these, this is not going to be dishwasher safe anyway, so. And then if you added like a sealer, a sealant or like wax or poly over the sticker, it would help keep it in place and also give it some protection. So that's an idea if you too struggle with your lettering. I'm already doing the second coat. You can see how fast it dried. And I may do a third, I'm not sure. Just see how it goes. All right, just painting it on. I do have quite a few grain sack items in my house, so this will look cute in my kitchen. It kind of has that vintage look. Some other ideas, if you don't want to do stripes, you could do polka dots. And the way you would do that is you would dip the end of your paintbrush in your paint like that. <clears throat> Let me show you on, I'll show you on this. Okay, so you dip your end in the paintbrush and then just dab it on. And that's an easy way to get polka dots. You know what your mom likes and so do something that reflects her. All right, so I'm not gonna wait for this paint to dry because I've overlapped it quite a bit on the tape. I'm just going to peel it off and we'll see if we were successful in our craft fail save. I would love to hear about craft fails that maybe you've experienced. I know we're not alone in that. All right, I've got a piece of tape that's stuck, so I'm just going to snip it. For me, when I do projects like this, my sanding block is kind of like my best friend because it helps to erase imperfections. You can add distressing and it smooths out any lumps or chunks that you might have. All right, so there's our grain stripes. Now I think I might attempt to do the word mom here. Do you think I should? <laughs> oh dear. Let's go ahead and let this paint dry and we'll see what I come up with. Well, I decided not to tempt fate a second time and just in the efforts to keep this video as short as possible, I'm going to add a coat of clear wax to seal my paint. 
This also makes it easier to clean it. This wax is by Dixie Bell Paint and it's called Best Dang Wax. It looks white in the jar. I actually have moved it from the original jar into the smaller one, but it's a clear wax. It dries clear and it's kind of like, I don't know, putting lotion on. I mean, it's just really creamy. A little goes a long way. And I'm just gonna let that set here for just a minute. Got a little bit of condensation in my jar. I'll wipe that out. So when you wax, um, I know a lot of people wonder about the difference between wax and poly. I actually prefer wax because it's just so much easier and it doesn't smell. But if you are struggling knowing whether your project uh, should be sealed with wax or poly, I have a great blog post that it explains a lot about it and I will put the link down below. Okay, so that has just kind of sat there for a couple minutes and now I'm just going to um, burnish it. What this does, it actually, it just works the wax down into the paint and it actually leaves a really pretty sheen. It's like buttery soft to the touch and I think this looks cute. I'm gonna go ahead and style it in my kitchen with some of my jadeite pieces. And thank you, if you're still watching, thank you for sticking with me.